what's up guys and welcome back to another youtube video so this is going to be the third part of flask python development series so in this video we are going to learn how to log in a user how to retrieve form data from the html page and also we are going to learn how to use sessions to store login credentials or username slash user credentials and user data as sessions on the flask web app so basically we will be learning how to retrieve the form data you know the text input field and how to retrieve it back to the back end of the server and process it according to our need and actually store the user credentials such as username and password as sessions in the web backend so without further ado let's get started so guys this is where we actually kind of left off last time so so currently we have learned how to place uh templates inside this templates folder and return it according to our need and also we have learned how to play static files such as images and serve it to our user so in today's video we are going to learn how to retrieve data from html pages and log in our user to our flask web app such as a chat app in this case so let me just go and show you currently where we are so let me just go and open up our cmd CD desktop, CD setup, setup Python app.py. And you can see the server is now running. And if we come back to our web browser and type in the local host and over the port 5000, type enter. You can see our chat apps home page is shown in this case. So if I press enter chat, you can see we have reacted to the login page and this is the login page so instead of showing this message this is a login page we have to show the user form in which you can users can actually enter their name and log into our chat app so we are going to not going to use any password database that kind of things just to understand how sessions works how to retrieve form data to the back end of the server etc so now in not without showing this message now we have to run an html file and serve that to our user so we have already learned how to do that uh, you can see we have rendered our home.html file into our root of the web page so likewise we have to now render our login to our html page to the to the login route so so first of all we have to create a new file login.html and save that inside our save that inside our templates folder you can see chat app templates and you have to save that as login.html so you can see login.html is over here let me just go and copy this and paste it over here instead of chat app let me just say login and instead of this uh, chat app tag let me just say it as login so we don't want any messages to show for now for now we will be showing another messages in next tutorial we're going to learn jinja template which is used to retrieve server data and display it on the web web i mean html page so today we are going to learn how to retrieve data from html page and to the back end of the server so next video we are going to learn how to send server data to the html and display it over there so now you can we just get rid of this image and this is not needed and instead of now we have to start putting up a form so if, if you come inside this terminal you can see get data so get and post are the two methods which is used to retrieve and so as give the data to the server so we are going to use a method called post to post the data to the server and the server will handle the rest of that so if i can say method is equal to post so whatever data you want to retrieve to the back end of the server must be must be put inside this form so let me just go close the form so now let me just go ahead and create our input field in which we have to enter the name of the person so let me just be input and i'll say type is equal to text and you'll say name is equal to name now another thing we have to do is submit the form to the backend whenever it is time so when i press the submit button we have to submit that data back to the server 
right so in order to do that you have to type input type is equal to submit and value is equal to in the chat i mean let me let it be login so save that you can see now we have created a form with the method post and we have created an input field in which the user can actually input their name and we have created another input tag which has the test type submit type which will actually eventually submit the submit this form over here so if the user presses this button over here it, the form will actually get submitted to the app dot by over here the back end of the server i mean back end of the web page so now we have to return the home dot html i mean login dot html when the user visits login right so let, let, let me just say as we have learned the second video run the template and we will say login dot html perfect let me just gonna save that and if i come to the terminal over here is restarting and now if i come inside in here reload this page it will actually show the web page over here you can see login okay login is over here why is the enter chat oh i haven't created clear the enter chat we don't need this button over here it's not needed so let me just save that again reload this page again and it will actually remove the enter chat and show the login you can see you can press enter your name but it do not work because we haven't programmed the backend to work that way right method not allowed that is because the currently the login route over here is not accepting post methods from the web browser so in order to make it accept post methods we have to do is methods is equal to get and post so this will allow this route over here to accept post method post request from the web browser so if i gonna save that it's restarting detect change i'm restarting now if i come down in here and go back and if i submit again i mean login again to the server it will actually return that no response was provided from the server because even if the data is the data is retrieved to the login route the login route don't know how what to do with the data so we have to do is that if method dot request dot method so in order to do that we have to module import another thing called request if request I mean request dot method is equal to post then it will say name is equal to name is equal to request dot form of and i will say name let me just print out this name so i'll explain what is happening over here in a second so if i come back in here go back and the chat and if i can load up why is it not loading fast enough oops something is wrong oh sorry i didn't okay i'm too much my mistake sorry if i reload this page start the web server again and reload this page to login you can see login page is over here i can actually enter some name and login and you can see it have done something because it didn't listen you can see aj is printed over here so now what we have done here so we have actually checked if the request is a post method then with our errors we have retrieved the form data of with the, with the name name so you can see inside in login form you can see we have pl placed the an input text field as name so we should recognize inside here form of name which will return the value inside the form while submitting the form so that's it we have successfully retrieved data from html page if you have any doubts put it in the comments below hope you guys have understanding what i am trying to say here so so that's it we have successfully retrieved data from the html page you can have multiple number of you know multiple number of uh, fields such as user input uh, i mean password you, you know whatever you can need but I, in this chat app it's a public chat app we are only using the name of the person to chat so that's it for now we have successfully retrieved value 
from the text field and we have print the name of the person so guys the next thing we have to do is actually login in our user to our web app right so how are we gonna do that we are going to use a functionality called sessions 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 are used to store the username inside the flask web app as encrypted so it will be encrypted the username will be encrypted and stored inside the flask web app or the web browser and it will actually check if the user is in i mean logged in or not so if i come down in here we have to create an app dot secret key which for the web app so session is actually encrypted so for that we have to create a key which will actually encrypt and decrypt the user credentials slash data whenever we use the session so app dot secret underscore key is equal to this the score is my key so as you can see this is my key is not a really good passphrase so when you deploy the web app you must change it to something really good passphrase with a number of uh, uppercase lowercase you know like a password really big passphrase it will help so currently we'll go with this is my key and the secret key for our web app will be this is my key so so now we have to store the session whenever the user is logging in right so when the, whenever the user is logging in we will do is that you will say session i mean oh, i'm sorry this is session session of user is equal to string of name so what is it it is actually doing is that we will is this is a dictionary so it will be stored as user is equal to probably you should probably you, should, you are knowing that of course if you know the basics of python so this is called a dictionary so it will be a data this type of data type it will actually store the user to the pointing to the value name over here so it is stored it will store as session of user is equal to name so after this we will do is a redirect to another route of the main chat page so i will say create another app route app dot route app dot route i mean sorry app dot route it will say slash main and it will say define chat page and it will say return main chat page okay now inside in here we will say after doing this return to redirect redirect url4 url underscore 4 which i have been imported but i will import in a second url underscore 4 and you will actually create the url endpoint for main I mean chat page right chat page perfect now if i go inside the server hopefully no errors okay and now if i come back in here reload this page so resubmit the page the request is not defined why is request not defined okay let me just go and define request i have defined the request but i don't know what happened so if i reload this page again hopefully no errors this time chat page oops hey i'm really sorry just this chat page and read out this page and submit the form will hopefully submit the data to the backend you can see post to the login is over here and you can see main chat page now if you have noticed another again another feature over here if i if even if i haven't logged in it will actually if if i can actually say like slash main type under it will actually redirect me to the main chat page without even logging in right so yeah you have to check every time when a user is trying to access to the main chat page you have to check if the user is logging in logged in or out so first of all we have to create a logout button to log out or the current session of the user so say slash log out instead of here you say i'll say log out and i'll say session dot pop user 
So this is actually an error. If the user doesn't is not logged in, it is a result in an error. I will be correcting in a second over here. If I go to the logout and type enter, it will actually make to log out. Okay, I haven't returned anything, so let me just return redirect url underscore four. I will be returning the url for login. Save that inside in here. Okay, just post this over here. Okay, let me just go on and say slash logout type enter. You can see it actually popped my you mean popped the session of the current user over here and redirected me back to the login hope you have remembering the redirect and the url4 function that i have already explained the part two of this video so so you can see chat page chat page now i'm actually logged out so if i can say slash main and type under you can see i can access the chat page without even logging in so that's a really security breach so in order to check if the user exists and just do if user in session then return to the main page else we will do is return return redirect url4 url underscore 4 and we will be returning redirect url4 login so now it's set up and if the, even if the user is not logged in we will not actually get into the main page let's say main and type under i mean okay i'm sorry main type under you can see the user is not currently logged in and we have redirected back the user to the login page now we have currently we have successfully returned our user back to login page like hey you haven't logged in go and log in first so i have to log in now so i'll say hello and type press login you can see chat main chat page now if i go back and forth i can actually uh, come inside here reload and i can stay in this page so if i say log out and type enter you can see we are back in the login page and if i say main and type enter you, you may not access the main of main page of the chat application so that's the user obsession so that's it for this video we have learned how to retrieve data from the user how to log in a user using session etc so in the next video we will be learning how to retrieve data from the flask backend to the front end now currently we have retrieved data from front end to backend now we are going to send data from backend to front end using jinja template so stay tuned thank you for watching if you have any doubts or comments regarding this topic just put in the comment below i'll be definitely checking that so thank you for watching have a nice day. Bye.